Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're joined by Karen Gondoli, the CEO of LeoStream. Karen, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I, I'm looking around to kick things off. I wanted to see if you could just give uh, give our audience a quick overview of Le LeoStream and maybe explain you know, during that time, why there's an Emmy in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Love to. So LeoStream is a software company. And what we provide is a remote access platform that allows enterprises to connect their employees to the business resources that they need to get their job done, no matter where that employee roams. Obviously, we're all about remote access. The reason there's an Emmy is because we do a lot of remote access for the media and entertainment industry. And so every year, the Television Academy has, they, they give out some Engineering, Science, and Technology Emmy Awards. And LeoStream was honored last year to be awarded with one of those awards for our remote access platform. So it's a very exciting time for LeoStream. Obviously, we do more than just media and entertainment workloads, but it was really great to have that recognition from the Television Academy. Now, as part of that, what are some of the challenges that your company has seen other organizations struggle with as they try to enable this remote workforce? You know, the, the challenges you'll get with remote access are kind of similar to the challenges you hear everywhere, which is, you know, things have to be secure. How do I secure my environment? How do I keep my costs down? How do I ensure the productivity of my users? Those are really the constructs that you need to think about when you're architecting a solution for remote access. You know, some of the keys for security, make sure you're enabling MFA. You know, in this day and age, you shouldn't be not using MFA for anything. Double negative, but, and, uh, and then when it comes to cost, you have to think about, well, if I'm using cloud versus on-prem, how do I manage those costs? There's a lot of things, challenges around that, that people need to think about. And one of the, you know, hot things that's been you know, really the last couple of years, but is the public cloud. How has mm -hmm. public cloud helped, you know, those companies face those types of challenges? You know, it's interesting, the the cloud, you know, obviously the cloud's been around for a while now, but really over the last few years, the adoption has just skyrocketed when it comes to remote access requirements. And it's 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 been great. The cloud came to maturity at the time where people really needed it. Because when you talked about sending workers to work from anywhere, you don't always want to connect them back to your corporate data center. That may not be the securest thing to do. And so now what people can do is they can start leveraging the cloud along with their on-prem environments, build these hybrid data centers, in a sense, and now support work from anywhere. And the things that get them, well, from the security standpoint, again, you're not connecting roaming users into your data center, you're connecting them up to a cloud resource. And then that cloud resource can have access just to the data that that user needs to do their job or just to the applications that they need. So it's really about giving a privileged access at the right level there. And the cloud gives you ways to do that. From a, a cost perspective, well, you don't have to continue, you know, if you have all your workstations on-prem and you're talking about these really high power users like post-production engineers or seismic engineers, the workstations they need are beefy, expensive workstations. And if you have to keep buying those for your on-prem data center, that gets costly. The cloud gives you a way to kind of basically rent that as well as share them between users. So that's one of the ways that the cloud helps from the cost angle. The performance one, there's a number of ways that the cloud comes into play there. For one, you know, if I buy a workstation, this is this is the CPU and RAM that I've got. And at some point in time, maybe it isn't enough based on what the user needs to do. Well, in the cloud, if it turns out your user needs more RAM or CPU, turn the instance off, change the instance type, turn it back on, and now instantly they have more computing resources. So it's really easy to make them more performant. And again, that's that's no matter where the user goes, they can get that extra performance, which is great if you want to hire in places where maybe they don't have access to that type of technology. It's just, it's a wonderful way for giving the performance the users need. The other thing too, you know, your data center is kind of, it's stuck where it is. The cloud is anywhere, <laughs> obviously regionally, but that's the thing is you can direct users to a region in the cloud closest to where they're located. So that obviously cuts down the latency of the connection that they have to that resource which helps with performance as well. 
if we if we dig in a little bit deeper, what are some of the key things that companies should be keeping in mind as they uh, consider moving to a public cloud? You know, it's true that not all workloads belong in the cloud and not all users need to have their workloads running in the cloud. So that's really the key is to think about move to the cloud strategically and where it makes sense. You know, if you have applications that need access to large data sets and those data sets are in your data center, then there you could have delays and performance hits as the application tries to access the data. So maybe you want to keep those applications in the data center, or maybe it's better for you to move that data up into the cloud. You need to think about what's what's the best way to handle that. You know, there are data transfer rates when you're talking about being in the cloud. So you have to think about all of these different ways that the cloud incurs costs. You know, from, from LeoStream, we talk a lot about, you know, we'll manage the power state so we can power it down when it's not needed. We'll terminate it when you're done so you're not paying compute or storage. But that's where we come into play. We can help with compute and storage costs. Those aren't the only costs in the cloud. So you really need to think about all these different things to determine what's the best resources to put in the cloud. And then really, how do I secure that? How do I make sure that I'm limiting access to what people have access to and configuring my security groups correctly, authenticating users appropriately and strongly? These are all the different things you need to start thinking about once you once you move into the cloud. I was, I was reading an article yesterday and they were talking about, you know, in the data center, you had the castle and moat security. You just put a firewall around your data center and then you were all good. That's not how it works in the cloud. You really have to think a little bit harder about it to keep it secure. And if if a move to the cloud is coming for folks, you know, uh, what sort of role will, you know, giants like like a VMware have in the future? You know, it's funny when the Broadcom news hit the waves, everyone's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to, to VMware and are people going to move away from it? there's a lot of inertia behind technology. And, and so VMware is not going away. It's still going to have its on-prem foothold. Um, and obviously I'm just talking about desktops. You know, obviously servers is a completely different different beast. But when it comes to a VMware environment as a remote, as part of a remote access solution, you know, people want to continue leveraging that VMware hypervisor or whatever that they happen to have on-prem and they should. There's no reason to, to stop doing that. But what they need to do is look for ways to combine that seamlessly with a move to the cloud, again, where it's appropriate. So really, the key is to build hybrid environments and then look for a management platform that gives IT a way to seamlessly move between and manage those different platforms and really makes it transparent to the user. You know, when it comes to a remote access solution, really, the, the key, the organiz organizations care about security and cost. And I often talk about, you know, what does IT care about? But the thing that IT really, really cares about is making the end users happy and productive because the end, that's the end goal is, is what the end user needs. And keeping the experience seamless. The end user doesn't need to know I'm connecting to a workstation in the cloud or on-prem. They just need to connect to a workstation. <laughs> and so really that's the key is combine these environments, leverage your existing technology. You don't want to throw that away. You've made the investment and build a hybrid environment that's seamless for the end user. I think that's a great point. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been involved with like VDI desktop virtualization for a long time. And, and, and it used to always be about the technology, the connection and all that. Uh, and, and I'm glad to see that, you know, nowadays people are more, you know, focused on the end user and the experience. So I think, uh, I think we've gone kind of a long way through the uh through the the path of the technology itself and, and getting it to the point where it all just kind of works uh and now they can we can focus on uh, end user experience and like you said they shouldn't care how they're connecting what they're connecting to just that they can get in and do their work right right exactly now i don't want to put you on the spot but if if you could I'm, i i always like to kind of learn what's next so as we look towards the future uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about what's on the roadmap for LeoStream? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We we love talking about technology. You know, the, the thing about LeoStream, we've always been right on the edge. We we like to look ahead and say, what's coming down the pike? We want to make sure, you know, I, I didn't really say this earlier, but our, the idea with our remote access platform is to be vendor neutral to everything else in the stack. So 
use the cloud or the on-prem hosting provider or, or whatever, you know, OpenStack, we don't care. Use whatever you want to host your machines, connect users using whichever display protocol you want, manage profiles using whatever profile manager you want. What we are is that seamless end user experience. Give them the portal to get them access to everything. Give IT the portal to allow them to manage everything and obviously secure the authentication and develop really rich rules to indicate who has access to what. That's the core of what we do. But now to keep that to keep that expanding, we want to make sure we're you know add more hosting providers, make sure that we have the protocols that people need, make sure all the different ways they want to uh, design their access control rules are, are possible. We're all about making sure our customers can do what they want to do, leverage the technologies they have, again, but also look to the future and incorporate new technologies as they come to market without having to change the end user experience. So to that point, what some of the things that we're working on, we actually just announced the integration that we're putting in with AWS Workspaces Core. So that's going to add AWS Workspaces into the mix of things you can manage in LeoStream. So now you can have hybrid on-prem VMware and Workspaces in AWS if you want. Uh, we're also doing a lot more with our AWS integration. We manage EC2. We can so Basically, if you don't want to use Workspaces as kind of the infrastructure as a service for your VDI, you can build it all out yourself using AWS EC2 and VPC and all of those pieces with LeoStream as the management platform. And we really want to add additional functionality on there, again, allowing people to not just manage costs, but also have a visibility into it. We want to do a lot more integration with the billing and make dashboards so you can really see, okay, what, what are my cloud costs are? Because sometimes it can be surprising what, what they become and where, where they come from. Um, so more AWS integrations just in general along there. Um, another thing that we've been thinking about for a little while, and it's starting to bubble up a little bit more, is container support. So actually allowing you to manage containers as, again, another resource for, to connect users to. Uh, that's great for, for DevOps use cases. If you have groups of developers who need access to resources and containers, that would be a good use case for that. Uh, what else do we have? You know, we... Uh, about a year and a half ago or so, we put out the first version of our dashboard. Again, it's all about giving more visibility into what's going on in your environment, how many desktops are used, who's using them, things like that. So we're always looking for to add additional widgets to that so that IT and the people they report up to can have really good visibility into the what's going on in their environment. Um, so those are some of the real big things that are coming down the pike. It sounds exciting and uh, look forward to uh, learning more about that in the future. Uh, you know, Karen, I really appreciate you joining the show today. And as we wrap things up, uh, where can viewers go if they want to learn more about the company and some of the things we talked about today or maybe getting their hands on your technology? Oh, well, yeah, that's that's easy. It's leostream.com. Leo like the line, stream like the river or like a stream. Um, and yeah, there's tons of information there, case studies. We do offer POC, free licenses for proof of concept. So if people want to give it a try, we're happy to do that. And we have a phenomenal support team. It's one of the things we pride ourselves on is being, a, being very customer focused and being invested in the success of people who come to us. So if you want to do a POC, we're not just going to chuck a license at you and say, hey, good luck. We're going to actually help you out. So please uh, check it out. And again, we like solving the tough problems. So if you're looking for a remote access solution, give us a call. Great. Thanks again. I appreciate website. it. <laughs> All right. Appreciate All your right. time. All right. Take care. Thank you very much, David. Right. Take care. Bye.